Michael Lothian, Lord Lothian. Um, we have a Brexit problem, but why don't you talk a bit about what that means for the EU and whether you think maybe Boris Johnson, whose words are always taken with a big pound of salt, um, can, can sort of pull this off. Well, I was rather pleased and surprised we got this far around the circle without anybody having mentioned Brexit. I know. That, well, would, that wouldn't <laughs> have been the case last year, I can tell I you. I think it's become, <laughs> that's right. As someone once said, we were afraid it was an infection, now we realize it's a vaccine. <laughs> I think one of the problems why we don't talk about Brexit so much now is none of us know where we've got to. Please, whatever. You know, it's one of those exa great examples of three years of people, highly intelligent people, negotiating with each other day after day, and at the end of the three years coming and saying we've got no solution. And possibly that over the next <coughs> few days we'll find that Boris and a flurry of words will have found a solution, but uh, not one that I can see readily on, on the way. I think the other interesting thing is I don't have much difference with my colleagues here on when they say are the differences within Europe. I think we're all mainly agreed on that. I think one of the elements that I would like to sort of highlight is that when we say why are there these differences, why do they lead to populism, one of the reasons is on one side there are what a lot of people feel are the elites, the intelligentsia. Um, who we, have, you know, we heard today from Anna, I think it was, that uh, in, in the end, Europe, through its intelligentsia, must tell the people of Europe what they think they need. If you said to me, what was it that caused Brexit in the first place, I would say, largely that. There was a feeling in Britain, and perhaps more widely, that we weren't being listened to. When I say we, I'm not saying the politicians. The politicians were always playing and listening. But ordinary people, and they eventually showed it in a vote. And we've seen this in other countries where there haven't been votes. I wonder what the result would have been had there been similar votes. That they show it by getting on, on the street, or by protesting, or by raising matters in Parliament in a very unhelpful way. We've seen our Parliament brought, almost brought to its knees by parliamentarians, the so-called intelligentsia, trying to work out a way through the present impasse. Then I think we do have to go back fairly soon to saying to people, what is it that you look for from the European elite? Do you want to have some system whereby you can regularly be asked, what do you think? What do you want us to do about it? And we begin to answer that. And it's the answering of that that I think is the most important thing at the moment, more than Brexit. Uh, I think there are two areas where already we could be working to establish a common ground, whether we're in Europe or outside Europe. One is intelligence because there is so much sharing of intelligence at the moment, which is not bound to the European Union. It's done on a voluntary basis. And we cannot see that in danger because that would be very dangerous for the, the Western world as a whole. I think we should be working out structures within which we can properly share intelligence and if necessary, not sharing when we can't. Second thing which has come up before is the, what was known as the European army. I don't see it as that. I think there is a very big void now in Europe for a military force. And I don't see it being a European one for the reason that there are certain countries who would not want to join it. There are other countries who might well say well, the first time we have to take a decision as to what they should do, we don't want to do it. So we ought to now look at how we can begin to build a military force and a military establishment that brings in those countries that can really offer something positive. Those countries, by and large, and we know it within our hearts, are Britain, Germany, and France, and probably, in a certain sense, Poland as well. We should be looking now how we begin to form a structure within which they can operate as a group, not in Europe, not necessarily in NATO, but as a group which has a European common strand. Great. Okay.